Guys, when you see a question like this, I want you to have a big smile on your face. This is easy marks. Yes, these questions do take a little bit long, but it's easy, easy marks. Okay, so what you do is the following. Um, you just go fill everything in. So, well, first of all, when you are asked to find the equation, usually it's really nice if they give us x-intercepts, okay? I don't know if you've seen any of my other previous videos where we speak about this. If they give you x-intercepts, then it's really easy because then you just make the three brackets. Uh, but in this question, they don't give us the x-intercepts. They're giving us stuff relating to the first derivative, the second derivative. So what we do in a scenario like this is we just plug the information in. So the first piece of information is over here. So they're telling us that when x is 0, y is minus 4. So you literally plug that in. y is minus 4 when x is 0. If you had to go work this all out, you'd find that d is minus 4. There we go, guys. So we have already found d. Now we just, so we've used this, we don't want to use that again. Now we move on to this one. They're telling us that we need the first derivative. So let's go find the first derivative. So long. The first derivative of this is just going to be 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. The d falls away, that's at the end. Now they're telling us that when x is 2, this first derivative is minus 26. So we can say minus 26 equals to 3a bracket, I'm putting a 2 plus 2b bracket. Wherever I see a x, I just put a bracket. Now we can neaten this up a bit. It's going to give us 12a plus 4b plus c. Now guys, there's nothing we can do here because there's an a, b, and c. Not possible to solve. That's okay though, we leave it like that for now. Now we move on to the next piece of information, which is the second derivative. Okay, so we come back to the first derivative and we carry on. So that would be 6ax plus 2b. What I want you to realize is that as we take a derivative, the number of variables, like the a, b, c, and d, becomes less. That's a good thing. You don't want to have an equation with like a, b, c, d, e, f. You want equations with very few variables because then you can actually solve. So now what we do is we plug this in. So they're telling us that when x is 1, the y value is minus 10. So we can say minus 10 equals to 6a bracket 1 plus 2b. I'm just going to neaten that up. Minus 10 is equal to 6a plus 2b. We can't do anything with that because there is more than one variable. However, at least we can say we have now used that. So now we use this one. So we plug this into this part over here. And so that's going to be 2 equals to 6a times 3 plus 2b. And that's going to give us 2 equals to 18a plus 2b. And now we've used that. So we've used everything. So now things should start coming together. What you need to realize is that these two equations can be combined simultaneously. Why? Two equations, two unknowns. So let's do that so long. Now, guys, please don't only follow my method. There are so many ways you can do simultaneous equations. Um, there's multiple ways, but an example, I'm going to use this equation over here and I'm going to get b alone. So I'm going to divide everything by 2 first of all. You don't have to do that if you don't want. And so if I get b alone, it's going to be b equals to 1 minus 9a. I'm then going to take that and put it in the place of b over there. So I'm going to end up with minus 10 equals to 6a plus 2. Brackets always a good idea. 1 minus 9a. I'm then just going to multiply out quickly. I'm then going to solve for a. Ah, a becomes 1. Okay. So if I'm moving quite quick, it's because I know that you guys know how to do this. If you are getting, a, if you are making a mistake, just look at your work carefully. It's usually something so silly, like a little minus or a plus. Okay. So now that we have a as 1, I can plug that back over here and find that b is 1 minus 9 times 1, and so b should be negative 8. Look at this, guys. We now have a and b. Now what we do is when we have a and b, we can now go back to another equation, such as this one, for example, and we can find c because we've got a and we've got b. So we can say minus 26 is equal to 12 times 1, for that's a, plus 4 times minus 8, which is b. And that's going to give you minus 26 equals to 12 minus 32 plus C. And if you had to go work out C, you're going to end up with minus 6. Now we have everything. So we can say f of x is equal to A, which is just 1. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Minus 8x squared 
minus 6x and then d is minus 4. And that's how you do it.